So Josh is playing Geb. This is a recent game. This is the third. No, no, no. Okay, this is the 10th of March, so not too long ago. This is what, six days ago? All right, that's good. Recent gameplay, nice. Um, so he's playing Geb. Their team comp is Geb, Cernos, Hera, Awilix, Kumba into Daji, Raijin, Bacchus, Odin, Ernabog. So pretty interesting team comps. One of the most important things you have to look at when you're like in scrims or just ranked in general is you have to look at the pressure, how pressure does, and you have to know the characters that have pressure, good clear, in early game and stuff like that. Um, and you should be able to tell right away just based on each of these comps who's going to have pressure. And it's it's pretty obvious it's the enemy team um, for a few reasons. But Gab doesn't really have pressure. It's assuming Odin solo. Odin solo is going to have pressure over him uh, just by out clearing and being a warrior early game. Um, Raijin's going to have much better pressure than Hera early game. Hera's clear early game is pretty bad, and Raijin's pretty good. Um, and then Bacchus, Chernobog is definitely going to out 2v2, Cernodos, Kumba. Well, that's probably a little bit closer, to be honest, just because Kumba, Cernodos probably has a lot of early game damage, and they have kill potential, like, from double root, since it doesn't DR. Um, so that one's probably... That might actually be in Kumba, Cernodos' favor, but um, that's not too big of a deal. It's usually... Uh, uh, the Raijin is going to have a lot of pressure as well. And then the Obelix and Daji is kind of just whatever. So, Aggressive support would have been better for the blue team, right? Yeah, probably. Just because you already have a peeling uh, solo through Geb, and he's a bit more of a late-game character, you should probably go more of aggressive support. Although Kumba's not the worst. Um, into this comp, though, I probably wouldn't go Kumba. I don't really see the point of it too much. Daji can go into the air, so Kumba's not really peeling for the Daji because Daji's just going to peel herself off of the Kumba. So, yeah, Kumba's probably not a great pick this game. They don't have a lot of auto attackers, so you're not really getting great use of the the mess um, stuff. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't have gone Kumba this game. It's not not the best pick. Maybe he's thinking because he can interrupt Bacchus Burp. That's not really that, that big of a deal. Um, Alright, so Josh playing Geb solo it does not go TP. That's probably the biggest mistake so far because you can play without TP, but on these like low pressure guardians or on characters that aren't gonna have a lot of pressure in the early game and have a hard time clearing uh the wave early on, you usually want to go TP so that you can just make sure that you're always in lane so you don't lose too much pressure. Um having two like actual relics late game is really nice on Geb, especially because you can go like blink and then whatever team fight relic you need or like thorns or something like that. Um but I'd still probably go TP on Geb just because it you definitely need it so that you can keep your pressure up and play off of your power spikes, your CDR and stuff. Um, and if you're going to go Blink and not go TP, I highly recommend that you do not just go Chalice. You should probably go more pots because more likely you'll get poked out um, and not be able to like back and TP back in and immediately have pressure again. So you want to be able to stay in lane for as long as possible. Um, so right here you should just... Well, that's rough. So now you may miss two of those minions, but you want to tag the minions and then go to blue. If you have the right idea, just make sure that you hit it. It's a little mechanical thing. Um, as far as the first wave goes, you already had to uh, force a pot. I probably wouldn't have done what you did. You walked up into the wave and hit the Odin, and then minions hit you, and then uh, the Odin trying to hit you a few times, probably gives Warrior's Blessing sacks and stuff like that. I probably would have just uh, played it a little bit slow so that you uh, can zone the minions a little bit, because all you're trying to do early game like you're doing right now is just zone minions so that you can get Guardian stacks, because your clear isn't good, and um, you don't really have fight potential. Unless they make like a horrible mistake. Right here, focusing the, the melees, which is smart. Some people like trying to go to the archers when they definitely don't have enough clear for it. Um, but you're also getting your, your pots force when you don't have TP, which is rough. But if you had those extra pots, it wouldn't have been, wouldn't have, been that big of a deal. So on Geb, you can max your, your two or your one. Um, on Geb solo, both are really good clear, and the one goes down in cooldown if you upgrade it. So. You can definitely do either. I like to max the two a lot of the time, though, um, because uh, I, I like to save it for like burst with my jungler. So if you two at the right time, you just do a ton of damage to someone and uh, basically one shot them. So your early game fights aren't that bad. Um, but well, that's fine to max as well. You're definitely going to max the either one after the first one. So if you max the two, you want to max the one second, and then if you max the one, max the two seconds. So. <clears throat> Um, and also, the last wave, you toed the front minions and you didn't hit the back minions. Want to make sure that you try and hit the entire wave. Kind of you like postured over so you could try and hit the, the Odin or something like that. 
uh, which you definitely don't want to do. And you're tr taking a lot of unnecessary poke by sitting in the wave when the Odin has his clear up. So you want to be mindful of either trying to uh, consciously juke it or to just wait for, just don't walk up to the wave until he has his clear, because, or until he uses his clear, because he's not going to clear so hard with his auto attacks that he's going to push every wave under tower. So you should try to um, either save your, <clears throat> save walking up to the wave until he uses his clear, or just constantly try and juke it, because you can juke Odin uh, jump pretty easily. Uh, this is really rough. They have so much pressure, you don't have your TP up. They're just able to invade blue off of that. I think that Odin got a little bit lucky, and he stole it with his, his bird bomb. Your Awoke shouldn't be doing the buff. This is a pretty big deal. Your Awoke shouldn't be doing the buff literally right in jump range of the Odin. She should probably try and pull it back to the furthest point back. Or um, just wait until you can say whether or not the Odin will be there or not and just not do it. Um, their fight's probably going to be better than yours by a little bit just because they have double physical, a warrior, and dashi. Um, Awoke is pretty good, and Gap isn't the worst, so it's, it's probably going to be pretty close, but um at the end of the day i would probably bet my money on them winning the fight so um that kind of comes down to your jungler but you should definitely be communicating to her saying that the owner will be there so this is a situation where you don't have a blue buff you don't have a tp you're gonna have to back and roll all the way back to lane um without a blue buff so kind of feeling bad but it's not the worst it's not the worst thing ever Taxman, I just uh, watch over gameplays and coach over them for free on stream. It's like what I'm doing right now. And you just send them in when I ask for them, if you have gameplays. Rank gameplays or screams or whatever you have. And uh, yeah. So good ward. Definitely want to be warding low when not only you don't have pressure, but just because uh, your blue buff is already taken. So it's likely that they pass through there again to go for it. And it also shows if the Odin is going to walk towards that side of the jungle to either proxy or look for your back camp. So you need six more Guardian Sacks, which you can get on this wave. You can use your shield here just so you can tank up the minions. Not bad to two the archers just so you can get some damage on them so that they get one shot. Um, you don't want to try and save the minions that hard. You, you want to try and save them from hitting the tower as best you can. But if the other soul laner is really jerking you off and trying to do damage to you, you don't want to tank them for that long because you're going to take a lot of damage and they can really mess with you. So... Again, all this unnecessary poke when uh, the Odin has his clear up. You don't want to be sitting in the wave when he's doing that. You need to be consciously trying to avoid that. Little things like that, they keep adding up. So he's hit you with what? Maybe maybe like four of them. And now you can't even walk into your own blue buff because you're so low from him poking you out that um, he's just able to block you from doing it. He kind of messes up. He misses uh, the jump and you return some poke on him, which is nice. Don't You don't want to be afraid uh, when you're fighting. Gep still does a lot of damage early game, so... Um, gotta be careful here rolling out and he knows you're there um, you know he's right around that corner if he hears you roll out and you're this low he could jump over the wall and try and Odin KG and try and ult you so gotta be careful of that I would have probably saved my roll out there let the minions come back a little bit um, once again I, I don't mind that you're you're getting wards this early in the game wards are definitely good at all points but um a lot of this poke, you could have been regening with your uh, your extra pots if you had gone them. Uh, good peel for yourself there. You won't die ever there if you just do damage to him while he has his shield up, so it doesn't do as much damage as it should. Um, so if I'm this uh, if I'm this enemy Odin, what I'm thinking is, well, this guy's really poked out. He has no pots. He doesn't have a TP. I should because his TP is going to be up pretty soon, right? Probably like a minute. Um, he just should probably try and poke you out so that you have to back and then play off of his TP for his power spikes because he has a TP play over you. He should have complete control of the lane like he does now, and he shouldn't lose it either. He should never lose the control unless he gets ganked and killed. But the only reason he's going to get killed is if he's playing like Obnoxious um, and gives your Willix a free gank. So you're getting zoned here. This is honestly a product of not, not having TP, getting hit by too many jumps um, by standing in the wave, <clears throat> and the fact that you know you got your blue stolen, stolen early game. Which, you know, a lot of times there's nothing you can do about that. If they just have pressure and you guys have drafted so you don't have pressure, then whatever. What can you do? Um, so he finally decides to push the wave. He probably pushed the wave here just because it was going to push by itself anyway. Because look at all these minions. He got zoned super hard. Um, this is really sketchy here. Not only are you going to lose a couple minions unless you blink over the wall. I literally would have just blinked over the wall there just to get some of these minions. You just, okay, you lost that entire wave. Oh, no. Okay, so right there. I would say F the blue buff. Even if you're not going to 
like get it, get credit for it, or not get credit, but um, actually pick it up. There is such a big wave there, and that entire time you spent was trying to get that wave while you were getting zoned, and then you ended up not getting the wave anyway. So that was really bad. Definitely want to try and avoid that. Nice blink out there to keep yourself alive. Um, basically, all you're doing right now is surviving the landing phase with no TP and getting blue buff stolen and just getting um, kind of bullied. Not doing the worst job ever. Definitely some little things that would have helped. That could have uh, could have helped you, but but all those little things add up, right? And they add up fast too, especially if you're getting hit by these uh, these bird bombs and stuff. It's just gonna make it harder for you to walk into the jungle, defend your own blue buff, to even grab it. He can just zone you out, stuff like that. I mean, we've talked about it. Um, but yeah. Want to keep that warded just because you won't have pressure for the time being. Um, looks like you're maxing maxing your shield second. You should definitely max your one after your two or your one or your two after your one if you max your one first, just so that you lower the cooldown of your rollout or um, increase the damage that you're going to do overall. Because both the base damages on your two and your one are insane, and it helps with your clear, clear a lot. If you notice, if you watch me play Geb solo or anyone play Geb solo, any like pro player, um, you become a farming machine once you get full cooldown and have your two and your one maxed because you can just two stuff and roll out through it and bam it's dead and you can roll out to the next thing you want to go to and do damage to that um <clears throat> so maxing the shield is it's not the worst thing ever just because it provides such a big health shield for your teammates but you definitely want those cra crazy base damages and uh lower cooldowns on either your two or your one uh, so blue buff is respawning. Your team's actually doing well. You're up four one, and you have a, a later game comp for sure. I mean, their late game comp isn't that bad either. I just mean that your early game is a lot worse than ours, or um, a lot worse than uh, theirs. You're getting ganked, and you're just peeling for yourself, which is fine. You used all of your chalice at this point. Your Sonos gets a solo kill in left lane pog champ. This looks like it's going to be a good fight for you. Your Wilkes is really low, but you have your shield in one, um, and you're getting some cleanup kills already, so that's good. Um, Hard of you to uh, shield before she blinked in. I'm assuming you guys just call that in comms. You're not going to get your blue buff here. You don't really have to worry about that. You already have enough MP5. Uh, you're really just getting it for the CDR. You don't get it. That's perfectly fine, though. Um, you got a kill in that fight, and you're getting some a lot of uh, XP here, which is really nice. You should be able to clear this way perfectly fine. I probably wouldn't be too afraid here. Um, the churn could ult to you, but this Odin is really low. You should. You might be able to kill him. Nah. Okay, right there, you might want to just tank the the bird bomb just so you're close to him as possible, and then you just knock him up afterward. Or you can knock him up right when he lands, and you won't actually do enough damage with his bird bomb. So, um, so this is another situation where it's sketchy because you don't have TP. So pushing this wave, like if you had TP, you could just back here, TP back in, and you'd get credit for this wave. But now you have to decide um, on either giving this this wave up and backing and rolling back all the way to to lane, or um, just trying to stay for the wave and not die by this Odin uh, bullying you out. So looks like you'll get the, the wave anyway because Odin pushed it into you and then kind of said, see you later. So that's good. Get our breastplate now. Now this is the big, big power spike. You're going to be able to do a lot more, uh, use your uh, clear abilities a lot more often and just farm a lot more efficiently. So that's where Gab really gets crazy, but it would be even better if you're maxing your rollout. So you want to try and max that second if you're maxing your two first. I know I've said it a few times, but it's a pretty big deal just because it's going to make your rollout a five second cooldown. So you can basically be anywhere on the map when you want to. So you guys are up 3k with a bad early game comp. Um, so this should be smooth sailing. You guys honestly should win this game. To be fair, they do have the Odin counter. I mean, four of you guys can't even get out of the, the cage. Their uh, cage damage isn't that insane though, but you know that's not really that big of a deal. If they can lock you in it and burst you, then it's always going to be pretty useful. Uh, but you're kind of getting out of the landing phase here, which is nice. At this point, you keep buying two wards, but you're only placing this one low ward. Try and get that somewhere. I mean, place it above Pyro at this point in the game when it's possible that they can do it, or um, try and place it towards like their blue buff. Right there, that's just like a knowledge of like how much damage people are going to do. If you know that Odin's going to jump on it this early in the game, he's not going to one-shot it, but he's going to do a lot of damage on it. So just two immediately after, and then you'll secure it. So um, that's kind of what happens in a lot of matchups. If somebody's trying to steal your blue buff and they use an ability on it, you should use your ability right after it so that they can't get an auto-cancel off or another ability off, and um, you usually out-secure them over it. So it's really just a, a game of who does it first. 
Um, so we're getting to the point in the game where you can start making these rotations towards mid and possibly towards gold fury and stuff like that. So you should be trying to hard push these waves and get out. Um, but you're not really able to because you're not maxing your rollout. You want to make sure you to the wave roll out and then roll out into the jungle and just be ready for those right mid camps for a mid fight for a possible rotation to gold fury. Um, because you're getting more towards out of the, the, uh, the laning phase here, so. Um, you decide to go the Phantom here. That's that's perfectly fine. I mean, you're going to be around your teammates a lot, so the Phantom is definitely good. Um, just based on my playstyle, I probably wouldn't do it. I would let my support go it, and then I'd probably go more aggressive uh, Relic or something that would um, maybe help me kill their carries a little bit better. But nonetheless, Phantom's still fine. It's just like a personal preference. But you definitely want to decide between you and your your support who's actually going to get the Phantom. And you could even go two. That really fucks up Odin, but probably don't need it. Um, to be fair, four of you can't get out of the, the cage, so maybe two would just make it even better. I guess we'll see. <clears throat> so Odin has a ton of pressure right now. He's able to proxy and kind of just do whatever he wants, walk into mid lane. So your job right now is to try and get that pressure back by proxying yourself, for one, getting wards out so you know where they are, so you can at least tell them, like, hey, this is where this guy's pathing or this is where the jungler is going to be. Um, and right now, you're kind of just avoiding him. You're not really fighting him. You're also not really clearing waves. You're rotating towards mid. You have a wave in your lane. You have a blue buff up. Um, you know, there's potential for a decent fight, but if the enemy team just backs up and then just messes with you guys at gold free, if you try and pull it, then this should be really good for them. And the Odin could have honestly just been pushing this wave, your solo wave, the entire time, and it'd be really bad for you. This is kind of a convoluted fight right now. Nothing's really happening. Um, a decent try at the blink, but Kai didn't really go for their carries. You want to try and go for their carries as much as possible. And you kind of blinked into like a ton of them in the, in the middle of the fight. Um, you kind of want to be a little bit more patient and wait so you can actually hit their carries. But like I said, that, that was perfectly fine for them because your, your rotation was super obvious for one. So all they have to do is back up, and best case scenario, they could have even just pushed out solo waves and got your blue buff, so they would have gotten a tower plus a blue buff, and there's no way you guys would have ever um, been able to do the gold in time. It was a nice try by the Awelix to try and steal it, but um, right there, it was just way too obvious of a rotation. Like I said in the last gameplay, one of the most important things in this fight is pushing out the waves, and um, you hadn't pushed out your wave. Odin had pushed out his wave, and that's part of the reason he's like two levels above you. I mean, he proxied uh, the wave before and had tons of pressure. Uh, and similar to last game, we're getting to this point where you're not really you're not really focusing on PVE, and you're also not really focusing on PVP. You're not really trying to one v one him at all. You're trying to avoid him, but you're also not actively getting the farm on the map um, by avoiding him. You know, so so for instance, that last uh, right before you rotated over towards gold, the Odin was just like smacking you down, and you were trying to run away from him, but you also didn't run over to your wave to push it or run to your blue buff to try and secure it or lead him away. You know, so. Make sure you're you're uh, trying to do at least one of those things. Sometimes even both. It depends. Usually when you do both, it's because you're like a bully and you're just uh like a a character that can clear the way plus bully. You know what I mean? Like uh like in the last gameplay, like Osiris is a good example of that. <clears throat> um, did the Willis actually steal the gold fear? I couldn't tell. I mean, you guys are only up one k. I actually she might have stole it, stolen it. Let me see. I'm just gonna go back real quick. You guys are up. You're only up 600 gold here. Well, it blinks in. I think she did end up stealing it. Oh, no, she didn't. No, she did. Wow, she got it. Okay, so the the Wilkes did steal the gold fury. Wow, that was really good. And you guys still lose this game? That's crazy. That was a good play by her. That's my bad. I couldn't tell it. The notification didn't pop up on your screen. It's been happening lately. Okay, so before we continue in, let me just get a sip of water and then. So you guys are still chilling. You're still ahead. You still have the Geb late game, the Hera late game, the Cernanos late game. They have a few characters that are just as good late game for sure. Um, but if I had if I had to place a bet, I would say that your your favors their late game just because Geb is so crazy late game. Um, the Hera is really good as well, and just that your early games are a lot weaker than theirs. So. <laughs> But it's still only 16 minutes in the game. There's going to be some pyro fights probably right about now. You're two levels down on the Soden. Not the worst thing ever because he is a is a warrior. But again, you're kind of not really focusing on either thing here. You're not clearing your wave and you're not really starting a fight too hard. So 
Um, what I've noticed, and this is what Clamy was doing as well last game, is you're walking to the jungle preemptively a lot. You want to be pushing the waves first before you even walk into the jungle because it just gives you so much freedom to to walk into the jungle and look for rotations and stuff like that. Because if you clear the wave and then walk into the jungle and the enemy solo is still clearing the wave or just doesn't know where you are, there's all this uh, potential time where you're going to be missing and he has to call that out. And there's all this time where you could be rotating to the mid fight, you could be rotating to like back camps to proxy. Um, and at this stage of the game, when you have a lot of your abilities maxed out, you want to be proxying the wave. Right here, Odin's over there. You should have said get back. You should have pushed your wave. Don't need to be focused on that wave. You're still under leveled. Um, I honestly can't say enough because every time I watch a gameplay, the number one thing I notice is that waves aren't being pushed. And the best way to get back into a game or to continue your lead is to continue farming and continue pushing waves into towers. So, And I know I've said it a bunch, but it, you can kind of tell that this rollout not being maxed is making a big difference. Because right here, if if he had his rollout max, he'd to this, he'd hit the brute minion a few times, and then he'd roll out through the wave and it'd be full cleared. But since he's not maxing his rollout, he has to sit here and auto attack all these minions. Look at this time. What is this? This has probably been like I'm just gonna say it's probably been like ten seconds since that Odin left the lane. And he's still working on the minion. He had to use his two again to clear the wave. So I'm just gonna say like let's say it was thirteen seconds where he had to work on that wave. That's thirteen seconds where the Odin is missing, can potentially rotate, and he's just sitting there in lane jerking off on the wave. You know? Um, so three levels down and down in gold as well and he did get a gold fury as well that's true <clears throat> this Odin is just applying so much pressure on your team as well just by rotating out of the lane and going to proxy it's just so much potential for him to be at like uh, mid fights and stuff like that that your team has to play back And it's part of it. I think you're playing scared as well. You should be pushing this wave. You shouldn't be. You should be focusing on the wave first, and then trying to help out your team. You still haven't pushed your wave. The wave is just going to die to tower. And a lot of this is also hitting the tower, and that's part of the reason your tower is so low. So that's the number one thing so far, I think, for you, uh, Josh, is that you should just be pushed, focusing on your wave, rotating after you got your farm, after you have your waves pushed. I honestly can't say it enough. Now you're starting to put points in your rollout, which is good. Um, looks like Wilkes got randomly picked, and now you guys are down like 2k gold. And I'm pretty sure you guys were down before that. It's not like it was just that kill that got on my head, but I'm not really sure what to ha what. I'm not really too sure what happened over there. <clears throat> But you definitely shouldn't be this far behind at this point. You're going to lose your tower. I mean, part of this is the fact that you don't have TP, but also a lot of it is just from not pushing the waves and not trying to proxy and not trying to push the waves as far up as you possibly can. You shouldn't be too afraid of a dodgy gank. I mean, you have your shield for cleanse, and I know if force comes to worse, you have your ult for the CC me as well. You should be able to get out pretty easily, and you have full CDR, so you're going to be able to roll out pretty often. Um... But yeah, you should be communicating communicating to your team that you're working on your blue buff and wave here, so you don't really want to look for a fight. Uh, but again, I'd go push out my wave here, even before I rotate to this site. You want to make sure, because not only is there a wave there right now, there's another wave coming, and the Odin isn't there. This is so much potential for you to get back in the game a little bit, because you're going to get XP while the Odin isn't farming at all. Um, and you're a guy that's going to thrive off of levels a lot harder than Odin is, because, I mean, Geb, all of his abilities are amazing. This is a really bad positioning by this Ryzen. Really good blink initiation from you. Um, you hit a lot of them. You hit their their carries, one of their carries, one of their main carries, especially after he uses uh, escape. But this fight was already going really bad for your team in general. Um, and you were behind specifically. So what I would have done, and this is the exact opposite of what the enemy team did earlier. So what I would have done if I were you is I would have pushed out both those ways, and then I would have rotated, and I would have told my team to mess with them at Gold Fury, but do not start a fight. Just try and survive. Just try and get them off of it. That way it buys you time to farm because you're behind. Um, it also buys uh, more time for them to either get hurt, hurt by the Gold Fury, to become indecisive and realize that maybe they need to defend their solo wave or maybe their mid wave because that was pushed out as well. Um, but because you guys immediately looked for the fight, you lost all that wave in solo. You lost all the wave in mid. There's a wave in duo that's uh, meeting right now as well. All of these waves aren't being pushed, and you're behind. Your entire team is behind at this point in the game. Um, so 
it's basically just like a you have to think in your head like um especially when you're behind if the enemy team is looking to do something like make a gold free play or something like that you have to use that time to get farm elsewhere on the map to get back into the game um it, when you're th not even uh that far behind like in this game you guys are pretty close you still want to contest that gold fury and you still want to try and get farm elsewhere as well um uh, but you kind of just have to like teeter in between like making sure that they can't get the gold fury and making sure that you're pushing your ways during the meantime so i know it's like a small thing but that would have made a big difference here and it's potent it's there's definitely potential for you guys to get that solo tower as well um, looks like since they killed four of you, they're all going to run to fire, and that's probably a pretty good call. It's only 20 minutes in, but they should be able to get that pretty easily. So, um, Like, I could break down, like, why that team fight went wrong and, like, what your teammates could have done better, but for the most part, a lot of this early game has been because of you. I'm not blaming you entirely for the reason you guys are losing, but um, with the basically the free early game that you guys got um, with the comp that is definitely not a very good early game comp um you should have been pretty far ahead or at least be in a spot where you're not behind and be a lot more useful in team fights because you know geb late game is definitely gonna trump odin late game even though he does get a ton of value out of his cage he does get a lot of value out of it yeah of course akami so they just got fire giant at 20 minutes in the game 21 minutes in the game that's a pretty early fire giant they have all these towers to get which they'll likely get that'll likely put them at, up like at least at least 15k especially when they get gold fury and stuff like that so this game's probably over i'm pretty sure you guys lose look potential for you guys to defend but i mean we went over the most important parts um the the, the way you play the rest of this game is you try and force actives um with your blink and you have to be really conservative with it. You try and force actives and then try and get like single picks off of those actives being forced and then try and get out of the fight and reset as quickly as possible. But that's the only way you're going to win a team fight. Um, you're never going to win it outright just like 5v5 and just like dive them super hard. You just have to try and force picks and then get picks or force actives and then get picks off of those actives being forced. Um, so you guys end up losing. That's pretty obvious. They ended up being almost 20 a K ahead after they got all the hours and probably the cold free and stuff like that. So um go back a little bit so the main thing similar to the last game really need to focus on those waves the level order was bad you definitely want to level your one after your two or your two after leveling your one um it's just too crazy of base damage it'll allow you to rotate a lot better it'll allow you to focus on those waves and then rotate in the jungle and not have to worry too much and honestly something that i, I mentioned before is that you weren't pushing waves or weren't even trying to proxy and stuff like that honestly most of the time doing that in dying because it looks like you're just afraid of dying like it looks like you're afraid to walk up to the wave and push it at the tower line or walk up to a proxy and push it you're afraid of dying in that situation a lot of time that is going to be better than what you're doing right now and what you're doing right now is kind of just afking um, you're not really pushing the wave too hard you're not really rotating to a team fight completely and helping the team out um the way you need to help your team right now is to apply pressure through waves and i talked about that last game at the beginning of this game one of the best ways to uh, make plays in solo is to apply pressure with waves so um, don't be afraid to the proxy if you end up dying for it who cares it, it forced a jungle rotation to come over there It gave you vision of where their jungler is where um, their solo laner is on the map where the waves are You're still getting your XP through the wave and the gold and everything like that um, So you should be trying to do that more often because it's gonna be a lot better than uh, AF King even if you die It'll still be better um, and it'll you'll learn a lot quicker like how you can uh, Survive like these like these proxies and stuff like that um Definitely unfortunate. That was just like a pressure thing for them to get your first blue buff. But uh, at the same time, you could have played not only the early waves better by not getting hit by bird bombs and not um, missing the archers with your two and stuff like that. Uh, but you could have gone like TP. You could have gotten a few extra health pots so you've been really strong here. You could have told your jungler, don't pull it. He can have a ton of pressure here and be there super fast. Stuff like that. So there's always things you could be doing. Um, but yeah, that pretty much sums it up for the most part. The best way you can help your team, and I'll say it again, best way you can help your team early game, especially when you're playing a character that scales really well into the late game and gets a ton of value off of the levels on his abilities. Geb is like one of the best characters in the game when he gets levels on his abilities. Like, it's insane. Um, just make sure you're getting your XP because your, te your team's job is to open up the map so that you can get farmed to the late game 
And your job is to open up the map so they can get farmed in the late game because you're all basically playing late game characters besides like a Willix, right? <clears throat> so just play off of each other. Tell your team, back up. I know he's rotating the Gold Fury, but I'm going to get a ton of farm here and I'm Geb. Like, this is going to be so good for me. Um, and you can do that, and that would have helped That would have helped you in like two separate scenarios. Um, and don't be indecisive. Don't be thinking that you should just hover between this wave. Wait, let me... Let me go back a little bit. Try not to be indecisive with hovering between this wave or rotating to a team fight. Commit to one of them. Push the lane and then rotate to a team fight. Make sure your waves are pushed and then rotate to a team fight. Or just go straight up to a team fight and say, fuck it, Odin's going to be in solo, but I'm going to be at this team fight. Let's all in right now. Let's go for the fight. Um, that's a little bit more sketchy because there's a lot more potential for Odin to uh, control the map at that point because he can push away and push things under tower and stuff like that. But you really can, just can't be indecisive about it, and you need to um, decide one way or the other. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, it for that one. I think that was uh, that was a lot. That gameplay was pretty similar to the first one. I think the the main the main mistakes, the major mistakes, were kind of just like PVE and just uh, not good wave prioritization and stuff like that.